And next up for first place for gold from Sweden, our uh, well-known Julia Ilhuka will meet Mrs. Sara Vartanen from Finland. Two very seasoned ladies longsword fencers. These two fences represent the absolute upper echelons of ladies' longsword. Sarah Bertanen. In the final for the ladies' longsword, in the blue corner, from GHFS, Sweden, Julia Lee Hooker. Julia Lee Hooker from Sweden is going to fight Sarah Vertanen of Finland, Espo, Finland, the defending champion. In the red corner. From EHMS Finland, Sara Vatanen. Sara Vatanen of Espo Finland, defending champion, won last year. Just won a few months ago, first place in women's longsword at the Dutch Lions Cup. One of the most accomplished women's fencers in HEMA, Sara Vatanen. But Julia as well, fine fencer, having meddled here in the past at Swordfish. Sweden or Finland? Julia Lihuka, two-time Swedish women's longsword champion, and I believe she was also the Nordic League champion for women. So these are two medaled women, experienced competitors. As decorated as you can get. Here they come. Julia's got a lot of energy. High pace. So does, so does Sarah. Now the right thing off is, the bat, high pace. Yes, and you've got a substantial size difference with Julia being a little shorter. Uh, uh, Sarah quite tall, but Julia is feisty. Nothing to be trifled with. A lot of sparring for dominance, positional. A lot of good offline footwork, both in in a flug going from right to left, looking for that opening, points weaving in and out, for Tannen, occasionally going up to right from Tog, little probing cuts here, both here little go. light Exchange. cuts. Wow. Wow, nice cut, multi-cut, looked like there might have been a cut to the arm, yes. An Unterhau to the, from the right by Sarah Fertanen, scoring one point on Yulia. Very impressive first exchange. Lovely, light, technical, Good fencing. Julia switching up the guards. Thrust by Julia, parried by Sarah Vertanen. Flug thrust. Shifting up to Ox, up to Fomtag. Cut. It looked like a, a cut to the hands. This. Looked like a cut to the hands, but. Ending in one score each. One point each, so no change to the overall score. Julia taunting the blade of Sarah Vartanen, seeing how, trying to get her to react, to create an opening. This is really energetic fencing from the women. Fantastic performance. Strike to the arm by Il Hooka. Did Vartanen counter? No, she did not. One point for Blue, which puts him at one point each, with one minute left in the first round. Fresh, Sver, parried. It looked like one of those got through. Looks like uh, judges couldn't really agree what happened there, ending up in one point each. One-one tie. Close fight. That Over looked like how? a. It looked like it might have been a crump to the wrist by Fertanen, resulting in one point for Fertanen. That looked to me like it was a crump out to the wrist. Cut from the right shoulder. Nice move by Sarah Fertanen. 
Sphere, a couple of spheres, a couple two, three spheres by Fratanen. One of them landing, it looked like, to the arm, but a cut to the head in return by Yulia Ilihoka. Last exchange in the first round. Vratanen two, in two. Tight match. Tied 2-2. Two, two. Parry. Cut to parry. Strike looked like a wrist an, by Yulia Hooker. Look, looked like an, a right Unterhau after a series of cuts and parries. Right Unterhau from Yulia, earning her one point, breaking the tie Sl three to two. Light lead here. Slight, the very slightest lead at the end of that first round. Very exciting match between these two. Worthy of the gold. And you see here, uh, Sara Vertanen has, uh, she's a lot taller than Julia. And, and Julia's you know, holding, you, Julia's holding her own though. When, when you talk about and weight classes, really the advantage is in height, because it gives you a longer reach. But when you talk about weight classes, really that weight represents uh, the height of a person. It's arguable. It, I mean, certainly a re reach matters in fencing, but so does weight. You know, even with a shorter opponent, if they close in the bind and they move into grappling, or you have a tight bind and they move in close, that weight plays a big, big advantage. So is it height? Is it weight? Is it both? Probably a little of each. Vertanen has an advantage in her coach, Mr. Christian Raukonen, who's an excellent uh, coach and, and, and you can will be yes. able to, to analyze the situation for her and tell her what to do and how to We'll her. see him fighting later tonight for bronze and open longsword. Very experienced fencer. Looked Exchange. like an Unterhau by uh, Yulia and an after blow by Vertanen, resulting in 1-1, one, one, one. no change to the overall score. Yulia maintaining her lead. Strike to the arm by Vertanen. I, yep, it looked like there was no effective after blow or, or it was parried. By Fredana. 3-3. We have a tie once again. Very tight game. You see Vertanen twisting her hilt all the time. You don't know if she's going to go up in a, in a hang-in or a schwartz or, or what she's going to do. She's, she keeps you guessing there with her, her hilt work. It's this change from right to left flug. And Yulia doing the same. Oh, looked like strike to the hand by Vertanen. Julia counters. Does not land. One point for red. Slight lead by Fertanen. Will she defend her championship? Looked like another cut. Didn't seem like uh, judges saw that as landing. Oberhau, Zverhau, another Zverhau by Fertanen. Judges can't seem to agree on what happened. Uh, resulting in a, in a point for Yulia. Tie score once again. Seesaw match back and forth. With almost one minute left in the second round. This is really keeping us on the edge of our seats here in Sweden. You have to hand it to Yulia. Parry by Julia. Strike it looked to the like, right side. It looked of like it was a Zver. It looked like it was a Zver from Fertanen. But an after blow by Julia. Cut and a miss. Anything High could happen at this point. A change through. in tactics. The crowd is excited. So are the fencers. Something will happen. It looks like Schwersch by Julia Hooker, countered by Vatanen. We'll see what the judges say. Point each. Two points each. I thought that after blow was a bit out of tempo, but judges saw it differently. Strike to oh, the by Vatanen. Did Julia Sphere counter? to the arm or an Unterhau to the arm by Fertanen. One point each, still a tie. 
that was time. We are at a sudden death, ladies and gentlemen. Here, fighting for gold and ladies' long sword at Swordfish. Straight oh. to the head by Blow Julia to the Hooker. head by Yulia. But it looked like an after blow. That looks like two points Yulia. for Yulia Hooker. One point to Vertanen. Uh, scratches out a victory. The shorter woman manages to un seat to dethrone the reigning champion Sarah Furtanen. We have a new champion at Swordfish. This is a Julia giant Lee Hooker. Here. Julia E. Hooker. But I tell you one thing Matt, it ain't over. I want to see a rematch. I'm sure there will be one at some point in time. Excellent match. What? A real seesaw back and forth between these two fine fencers. You know, I have to say, I, I like to see the, I think everybody likes to see the underdog win. And when I see that kind of a height advantage in this kind of a, of a match, it's, uh, it's nice. Also Having fighting last year's champion. The fighting last year's champion, champion yeah. as well. You know, the, but that kind of a reach that Sarah Furtanen has, that is a big, big advantage. And for the shorter woman to fight that kind of a game and overcome last year's champion, that's quite an accomplishment. Well done, Yulia Ilihuka of Sweden. In the ladies' longsword, in third place, Carla Huvermann. The first medal won by Germany at Swordfish the by dark, a woman, a German woman. The dark horse. The dark horse appearing out of nowhere from Grunweiss Holten. From Holten, Germany. In second place, Sarah Vertanen. Finland, providing us a silver medal. Sarah also receives a pair of Spez gauntlets. Spez gauntlets as a prize, second place prize. And for in Sarah first Vertanen. place for the ladies' longsword, Yulia Lee Hooker. Yulia Lee Hooker from Gothenburg Historical Fencing School of Sweden winning the gold in an impressive close victory a well earned medal but she had to work hard for it Yulia will also receive in due course a lion's crown feather a lion the technical prize goes to Carla Hoovermann. Carla Hoovermann also wins the technical award, so she brings home two medals for Germany. She brings home a bronze medal and a technical award. You can see how moved she is by this. Well, it's fighters like Carla Hoovermann. We spoke about this last year. When you see fences like that coming out of apparently nowhere, you wonder who else is out there. Yes. Who else is out there? Who will, who will show up next year? And retaining that title, the Ladies Longsword, is not easy. It's true. So for all of you fencers out there, remember, it could be you. It could be you. Looks like we're going to have an interview. Is it not? <laughs> so joined now by Jake Norwood. Hi, Jake. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so uh, there's a huge crowd of Americans this year. Um, why so many this year? I think uh, this year we've had a, a couple of things come together. One is just a general excitement about Swordfish that's been building in the U.S. for years, but, but actually getting the kind of momentum together takes time. The second thing is there's been leagues developing in the U.S. and the competitive scene in the U.S. has really come into it its own. Uh, and as we saw this year, so many folks from the U.S. contingent made it into the final 32, the final 16, even the final eight. Uh, I think we've really come into our own in that regard, and we're just, it was an exciting time to come here and to bring it. Okay, and obviously you are the man behind Long Point, which is very much the uh, spiritual sibling uh, to, to Swordfish. Um, how do you think that's developing in tandem with Swordfish at the moment? I think Swordfish and Long Point are, are absolutely connected, um, absolutely sister, you know, sister events, so to speak. Um, some of the things that, uh, that we want to continue bringing are the kind of energy that we see here at Swordfish, the kind of difficulty that we see here at Swordfish. Uh, this is... 
Uh, there's something here at Swordfish. You know, uh, a pool fight at Swordfish is an elimination bout anywhere else. An elimination bout at Swordfish is a finals bout anywhere else. Uh, that's something that, that I think we aspire to as, as that sister event uh, in, in the U.S. And uh, I think we're coming up. We're getting there. Do you feel the uh, Americans are now bringing it over to the Europeans? Absolutely. We're bringing it over and we're taking it home. Okay, so you were fighting in Longsword and also in Sabre. Uh, do you have any particular memories from this uh, event, say in Sabre? In Sabre? No, no, it's a total blank. <laughs> okay, there may be something on YouTube later on that. Finally, uh, there's a number of jackets that uh, seem to be around the place of superheroes. Would you like to explain that? Yeah, the, uh, the Hema Avengers. Um, you know, Josh Paris. Where's Josh? Josh Paris is our, uh, he's our Iron Man to our Avengers, the guy who puts us all in cool stuff. And uh, he prepared these jackets for us, uh, part partially to roll out his new jacket line, but also just to bring an extra kind of esprit de corps to the U.S. team, which is, I think, part of what makes Team USA such a standout team this year. Jake Norwood, thanks very much. Thank you, Rob.